Hey you, welcome back to the space of possibility. I'm extremely grateful you're here. I hope you enjoyed the last course and that the seeds of mindfulness you sowed there have begun to bear fruit in your life. In this course, we're going to continue to water those seeds of mindfulness since love and understanding begins not with concepts or theory but by witnessing directly the nature of your own mind. But rather than focus exclusively on opening and developing a mindful awareness, as we do with our Vipassana practice, we're going to be a bit more directed in this course. Because we are habitual creatures, because what we think and ponder becomes the tendency of our minds, In this course, we're going to intentionally cultivate thoughts of goodwill, of loving kindness, of compassion, generosity, gratitude, and joy. We're going to cultivate intentionally within ourselves thoughts that are rooted in the direct experiential understanding we gain from our Vipassana practice. The understanding that we are not a part from the rest of experience, that we hold the world in each of us. Though I'll introduce practices from several different wisdom traditions, the primary channel through which we'll cultivate this habit of goodwill is another Buddhist practice called metta, or loving kindness. Metta is a concentration practice where the goal is to focus on the feeling of loving-kindness and its related states for extended lengths of time, to let it grow more vivid, more expansive. And we'll do this strategically. We'll sow seeds of loving-kindness across a landscape of social relations and nurture this garden until it's full of life and love so that we can share our fruit with the world. Today, though, I thought we'd just start the course with a reflection on the words of the Buddha when he spoke to a group of monks who had been trying to meditate in the forest but weren't able to because they couldn't find inner peace. They were scared. The forest was full not only of dangerous creatures, but many of the outcasts and outlaws of society also lived in there. So, to find inner peace, the Buddha told the monks to go reflect on these thoughts, which I've paraphrased and updated a bit. May you be skilled in goodness. May you be able, honest, and upright straightforward and gentle in speech, humble, modest, and simple in living. May you remain composed and calm, not proud and demanding in nature. May you do nothing the wise would reprove. May you wish in gladness and in safety that all beings be at ease, that they be happy, safe, and secure. Whatever living creatures there be, without exception, strong or weak, omitting none, the short, tall, big, and small, whether seen or unseen, living near or far, born or unborn, May all beings be happy. May none deceive or despise another. May none through anger or aversion, through hatred or resentment, wish harm on another being. As a mother protects with her life, her child, her only child, so with a boundless heart may you cherish all beings radiating goodwill and kindness over the entire world, spreading upward to the skies and downward to the depths, 
outward and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, may you sustain this recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding. With virtue, vision, and purity of heart, holding no longer to selfish or crooked views, and being released from all sensual desires, may you be free from suffering. May you truly be at peace. Okay, well, I'd like to read this one more time. But this time, as you listen, I invite you to really connect with the intention behind these words. Don't listen intellectually. Treat this like a meditation. Really try to embody the message. Let it live in you and work upon you. You want others to be happy. See if you can feel that. And see if you can really put the entirety of your being behind these words and their intention. May you be skilled in goodness. May you be able, honest, and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble, modest, and simple in living. May you remain composed and calm, not proud and demanding in nature. May you do nothing the wise would reprove. May you wish in gladness and in safety that all beings be at ease, that they be happy, safe, and secure. Whatever living creatures there be, without exception, strong or weak, omitting none, short, tall, big and small, whether seen or unseen, living near or far, born or unborn, may all beings be happy. May none deceive or despise another. May none through anger or aversion, through hatred or resentment, wish harm on another being. As a mother protects with her life her child, her only child, so with a boundless heart may you cherish all beings, radiating goodwill and kindness over the entire world spreading upward to the skies and downward to the depths, outward and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, may you sustain this recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding, with virtue, vision, and purity of heart, holding no longer to selfish or crooked views, and being released from all sensual desires, may you be free from suffering. May you truly be at peace. Well, thank you for making the effort to bring more love and understanding into the world and into your own heart. You truly are a remarkable creature. Until next time.